What's going on everybody? My name's Jason. I work at All Out Bikes. I've been in the bike industry since 1994, which would make it uh, this year 29 years since I've been doing this. Uh, now today what we're going to be working on is this 1952 Monarch Super Deluxe and uh, absolutely gorgeous bike. It was restored several years ago and they did a great job making this thing look very nice. Um, however, it was not the best restoration because as you can see in the picture here, it's not back to its original state. The the graphics are different and uh, most likely the paint is a different color. However, as you can see, the uh, person that restored this, this did do a great job to make it look vintage and it does look good. Now the paint is not the best quality, uh, it seems like, because the paint is not uh, staying on. So that could be a, the paint quality, it could also be the way it was prepped. Uh, either way, the paint's chipping off and it's going to need to have some touch-up done to it, which is not going to be done in this video. What we're going to be doing in this video is we're going to be putting some new tubes in this bike and we're going to make this rideable. And one of the things that we need to do to make this rideable is this rear hub is uh, not working properly. As you can see, when you're pedaling, it's not going anywhere. So this is a new departure Model D hub. And what's happened is the clutch on the inside has gotten stuck. And we're going to tear this apart. We're going to clean it up, put some new grease in it, and we're going to free up that clutch so that uh, this bike could be uh, ridden. So uh, let's get started on that. first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and remove the nut and washer from this side. We're going to put it aside where we're not going to lose it. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to make sure that this lock nut is tightened firmly. Now, I don't normally use adjustable wrenches. I really hate using adjustable wrenches. I, I'm a firm believer in using the proper tools. But uh, in the bike industry, everything is metric, and uh, uh, this is not metric. So make sure this is tight, and I don't know if you saw, but it's, it's moving quite easily. So this was not tightened properly, so we're going to lock it down good and tight. And then we're going to go to the other side, good and snug. All right, flip it over. And then we're going to remove the nut and washer from this side and it would have been nice if I grabbed a cone wrench for this. 16 works pretty good so we're going to get our standard <gasps> size wrench here and well those weren't even tightened properly we're going to go ahead and remove Alright, we're going to put this lock nut aside, keep everything in order, and then we're going to remove the cone. And be sure to have some rags handy, which I do not. And the grease is feeling pretty good. It is getting a little old. This this grease was put in, and it what this bike wasn't ridden. And uh, I don't know. It it does feel still pretty tacky. 
we'll probably just clean it up a little bit and put some new grease in. Now, what you can attempt to do is you can pull the axle through and let's see if you can see this side right here. We're going to carefully pull it straight out and the cool thing about this hub is instead of using some brake pads, this uses a bunch of spacers and it is kind of dirty. We're going to get this cleaned. Uh, so it's just a bunch of washers. There's two different shapes. There's one with three tabs and then there's a a washer with no tabs and just and just the um, the round hole with two flat spots in there. So make sure that you keep these in order. Um, let's uh, let's see if we can get this clutch freed up. If you have to, you can use a some uh, penetrating lube. Um, we're going to see if we can remove wow. there's more of these spacers in there and we're we need to try to remove those there's some right there we're going to put it on here in order make sure you keep your head in the right order. Let me get some towels. So there's still some of these washers on the inside. So you'd need some sort of a probe uh, to get them out. So I'm just going to get a spoke and I'm going to I'm just going to try to get them out. Just be very careful. You don't want to pull them too hard because we don't want them damaged. You know what? It'd be easier. I'll just get out some. I'm going to get this needle nose and I'm going to spread it out while I'm backing off on the gear here. And there we go. I just broke the clutch free. And then the clutch is supposed to come out this way. So I'm going to get this and I'm going to push in there, which is going to push the clutch towards the outside. Let's uh, get my finger in there. Sorry for the camera movement there. It's kind of hard to do all this. All right, so there we are. So we need to make sure, ooh, that's, uh, oh, that came off the table. You want to make sure that you've got everything. And these, these washers alternate. So make sure if you have a round washer that you, the next one is the washer with the tabs on there. And then tabs are all going to need to line up. So now what we're going to do is we're going to clean this up real good, put some new grease in there, and put it back together. All right. Now that we've got this all apart, and we've got the parts where we can find them, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and use a degreaser to clean this. If you don't have a good degreaser, uh, degreaser, what you can use is W40. 
I don't like using WD-40 in the store, but WD-40 is an excellent degreaser. It also works great for taking stickers off the frame because it'll eat the glue without damaging the paint. So let's get this cleaned up and uh, let's uh, put this thing back together. So the way this hub works is it's got a uh, threaded piece right here for the gear and then this right here is the clutch and what what happened was this bike has been sitting for so long the clutch got stuck in the middle it couldn't tighten up anymore like that in fact it's super tight and what that does is whenever it starts to tighten up this pinches in between the hub down there and then whenever you back off the other way it pushes on the uh, the brake pads so what we're going to do is we're going to clean all this up and put a good grease on there, clean up the bearings, and uh, put it back together. The first thing that we're going to be doing is we're going to put a generous amount of WD-40 on this. And that's going to start to eat away the grease. We should be able to pull the bearing off. And as you can see, that bearing looks really nasty. But with the WD-40 on there, we'll just start to wipe it. And it'll start to... It, it starts to eat the grease up. And it'll leave the metal nice and shiny. And this is uh, this grease has been in there for a while, even though it's never really been used. The grease has dried out, so we're going to get that uh, pretty clean. We don't need to get it super clean because there's no metal in the no metal particles in here. Uh, whenever I put the new grease in there, any of the old grease that's still in there um, will kind of up. I have a parts cleaner and um, I'll, uh, lots of times I'll put this in the parts cleaner but this is actually in pretty good shape. The grease is fairly clean so I'm just going to clean most of the grease out, put in some new grease and uh, call it a day. Okay, next thing we're going to do is we're going to clean this. And again, I'm not going to, I don't need to clean this super good because it's already been done before. Just clean some of that old grease out, the dry grease I should say, and uh, put some new grease in there. In most cases, it needs to be cleaned a lot more thoroughly than what I'm going to be doing here. But this customer wasn't planning on me having to do this. He didn't even know his uh, uh, bike wouldn't go. Gloves are kind of nice to have. So this clutch is kind of two pieces. It's got a, well, more accurately, it's more like three pieces because there's a spring in here as well. So if this pulls apart, you've got a spring right in there that slides on this. And uh, we're going to get this cleaned up and, again, grease it up.
I don't think this clutch has ever been pulled apart like this. Even whenever it was serviced last, I don't think it was taken apart. Yeah. Alright, so what we're going to do is we're going to put a little bit more WD-40 onto this right here. And then we're going to thread it on here. And it's sticking right there. There it goes. And back and forth until it gets freed up. Go. Something else that's good to get is a toothbrush. And what we're going to do is uh, we're going to continue cleaning all this. Try to keep the grease off of the sidewalls of the tire here, tire here. We're going to go ahead and put plenty of WD-40 on everything to give it time to uh, eat up the grease. We're going to put some WD-40 in the hub here. And we're going to get the toothbrush. And just start scrubbing. Kind of work it in. And I'm going to get this towel and I'm going to kind of really try to scrape out that old grease. And it does a pretty good job. I don't know if you can see there, but it does clean that up pretty good. So much better. Just going to clean out the inside as best as we can. Again, this customer wasn't expecting to have to go through all this, so I am trying to do a good job. And, uh, but I'm not going to do as good of a job as I'd like because uh, they're kind of wanting this kind of quickly and we are limited on time. prefer to put this in a um, in my degreasing cabinet and let it soak for a day Just kind of work it. That is nasty.
keep working it. Okay, you can pull these off and clean them individually, which is probably the best thing to do. But I'm doing this customer a favor by doing this. Uh, we can pull the gear, or gear, the bearings off, and we can clean those better. You need lots of paper towels for this job. this put back together. I'm going to get the bearing here. I'm going to grab some park tool, uh, the PPL-2. It's a very good grease for this hub. So we're going to put a generous amount of grease onto that, slide it in place. We're going to put some grease onto this part right here. We're going to put our brake pads back into place. Now, it's super important to line all these tabs up. You probably can't see it very good on camera, but we've got to make sure that all these tabs line up properly. And, uh, let's see, we're going to put some grease on these two. They'll work their way into the tabs. So um, I normally separate each one, but it takes a lot of time to do that. And uh, it's actually not necessary in this case. We'll put some more grease onto the bearings. We're going to get the hub. We're going to put grease on to the race there. We're going to put grease on the inside. We're going to put grease into that race. And it always pays it off to make sure that uh, you remember which side it came off on. Okay, we're going to put grease in, into this bearing. Grease, grease, grease. We're going to wipe this off again because WD-40 has been kind of soaking on there. We're going to put grease onto this. And what I love about this Park Tool grease is it does not dry off over time or dry out over time. So put the bearing on, make sure it's going on the proper way. More grease. Alright, so on this particular hub, you should be able to read. On the gear side, you should be able to look at the new departure like you're reading it from this side. 
So we're going to put this on. Now, it would have been much nicer if I got this cleaned up first before starting to put it together. But there we go. We're going to put grease all on this. We're going to put it back. We're going to line the spring up with the little slot there. And then we're going to lift this back up. And we're going to put this clutch in and thread it onto the gear. So there we are. It is Engaging. Okay. So now we're going to get the arm here with the brake pads and the bearing in place and we're going to try to line these tabs up with the slots in the hub. Now it takes a little bit of time, it typically won't slide in immediately and I'm going to tell you sometimes it's a royal pain in the butt. Uh, so we're going to find those slots And just kind of work it. Keep working it. And there we go. Notice I gave it, uh, I jiggled it, I shook it, and worked it in there. And uh, it was a little messy, but I'm, I didn't clean out this bearing, which you probably should. I'm going to clean the cone here. Some WD-40 would probably be best. Yes, it will. Because it's not wanting to clean off. But once you put a little bit of that WD-40, then that grease just starts coming off just like that. The stuff typically works pretty quickly. Little more. Oh. Be careful, don't get over enthusiastic with the WD 40. Alright, cone is clean. Boy, I'm just not real happy with that right there. I, I'd really like to do a better job of it, but uh, it's going to be a very good job. It's just, I kind of wish I cleaned it out a little bit more. But it's hard to get to that bearing without removing this lock ring. So we're going to 
screw that cone in and then we've got a lot of grease to uh, wipe up. Okay, we're going to get our lock nut, screw it into place, and then now the, what we need to do, we're going to check to make sure that everything is working. So we've got, we've got brake, we've got gear. Brake, gear, so we've got, uh, we have movement. Oh, still a little sticky, let's keep working it. Okay, so it's engaging a lot better now. So it's engaging there, and the brake is hitting there. There, brake. Engagement, brake. Alright, so we're going to adjust the bearings. We're going to feel the bearings, and we're going to tighten them up. These are not locked together yet, so I'm, I want to keep on tightening this up just a little bit until I start feeling some resistance, which I am feeling some resistance there. And that's a hair bit too much, but that's okay. We're going to take care of that. Once you get the bearing roughly where you need it, we're going to get the proper cone wrench. And we're going to put the, cone, uh, the, the wrench onto the lock nut, and I'm going to back off on the cone, which is going to loosen up the hub just a little bit, and then I'm going to lock, tighten up that outer part, and we're going to feel it. Okay, so I still feel a little bit more bearing than I want, so I'm going to hold this arm on this side, and then I'm going to back off on the cone. And what you're doing is you're locking everything together. Okay, those bearings are feeling pretty good. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hold the brake arm. I'm putting the cone wrench on there. I'm putting the adjustable wrench on there, and I'm going to kind of hold the arm in place while I'm locking the outside lock nut. Okay, everything is good and tight. Bearings feel great. And uh, let's uh, go ahead and put it back onto the bike. I like to put a little bit of grease on the threads of the axle. put the washer, we're going to put the axle nut on there, come on, there you go, washer, axle nut, give this wheel one more wipe down to get any excess grease, and uh, I'll see you outside so we can put this uh, wheel on and see how it does. Should work great, because I've done this many times before. Although, uh, I uh, wish I had a little more time to uh, have done, done a little better job on that hub, but 
that hub it's got new grease it's adjusted properly it's going to last longer than uh, uh, the customer needs it to last we're going to hook the brake up first and that will help ensure that whenever I'm getting this on that uh, we don't have to play around with it too much because I've in the past whenever I've been putting these wheels on you go to get it put on you get everything lined up and then the, the brake arm is in the wrong spot and what I do is I, I just tighten this side up just a little bit I check the chain tension that's kind of loose but whenever you go to straighten the wheel out the chain tightens up a little bit it's probably not going to tighten up enough so I'm going to I'm going to kind of walk it in place I'm, uh, I've got a little bit too far that way so what I'm going to do is uh, now I'm going to loosen this side a little bit and then go ahead and get the chain tension right which the chain just shifted I'm going to check the chain tension. Hey, look, the wheel's going. Okay. There's a tight spot and a loose spot. We're going to make sure that the wheel is straight. I need to come this way just a hair a bit more. Check to make sure it's straight. Looks good. I'm going to tighten this one just snug. I'm going to tighten this one snug. And then we're going to tighten up the brake arm. We don't want to forget that. We're going to tighten this thing up. chain's a little dry I'm gonna go ahead and grab some oil we're gonna get that uh, lubricated and then uh, we're gonna take it out for a test ride and all I was supposed to do on this bike was uh, put new tubes in that was it grab that oil we are going to be using a finish line wet lube on this one today and all we're going to do is just put some in the middle where the rollers are one to no more than two times around and that's it let's go for a ride <clears throat> this thing rides like a 55 and a half pound bike. It's cool though.
it doesn't ride as good as my Schwinn, but it sure does look cooler. I like the looks of it. So, uh, anyway, that's it on this bike. Uh, now I just need to get started on the uh, pink one so I can get these customers, uh, give these customers a call and let them know their bikes are ready. Okay. Now, these Monarchs are very unique bikes. Uh, the male Monarch has some very nice dressing on it, on the rear uh, fender and the rack. It's also going to have a built-in horn on this bike, which is really nice. I just really love the head tube area that has the chromed out head tube area. It's a very clean look, and we can't forget the linkage front suspension fork. Uh, very unique for its time. It's a style that's still used uh, today um, because it does work so well. Uh, the front headlight is a super nice touch on this bike. Just overall, this bike is just an absolute beautiful looking bike. Um, the only drawbacks is it's 55 and a half pounds. Well, I appreciate y'all watching this video. I really loved this Monarch. It's a great looking bike. Now, if you liked this video, please leave me a big thumbs up. Don't forget to comment down below. Don't forget to tell your friends. Check out some of the other videos on the corner of the screen. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.